Hey you, welcome back to J Mick. It's your favorite Aussie tea drinker, Jack here, giving you some more stories on the internet. Here is today's delicious bundle for you. I hope you enjoy. Story time codes are in the description down below, of course. Remember to like this video, otherwise I will crush your esophagus. Anyway, shut down, sit up, and enjoy the video. First story. Am I the a-hole for filing for divorce and threatening to take the kids after my wife started an OnlyFans account? Me and my soon-to-be ex-wife, both early 30s, have two children, one who's an 11-year-old female and one who's an 8-year-old male. We both have stable, well-paying jobs and we are currently working from home. My wife is very into social media and has a couple thousand followers on Instagram. She recently got in touch with an old college friend that is also into the whole social media influencer thing. That's how they found each other and reconnected. Her friend mentioned how much she was making on OnlyFans and how freeing it was. My wife has always been a free spirit and more open-minded than me, so she came to me with the idea of starting an OnlyFans, and once it got a stable following, she would quit her job. Now I'm strictly against this for two reasons. For my own personal reasons, and because we have kids. I told her that I'm uncomfortable dating a sex worker, and that our eldest has social media, and so do her friends. This would ruin her. My wife wanted to prove me wrong, and started a poll on her Insta stories asking if people would be interested in signing up if she made an account. Most said yes. Wow, what a surprise. The people who are following you because they are horny for you want you to make an OnlyFans. Jeez, what a compelling argument. She blocked our daughter there, but her friends saw it and it already teased her about it. Our daughter screamed at her mother and nasty words were exchanged. They are not talking, and this was two weeks ago. Our youngest has no clue about what is happening. My wife went ahead and made the account and already posted some pictures. Yesterday, I told her I'm filing for divorce, and I'd ask for full custody. Here is where I think I might be a bit unreasonable, as she is, in fact, a good mother. I can't stand the shame, and our daughter is heartbroken and being bullied at school. I'm beyond ticked off, and I never thought my life would lead here. This is still very recent, so no immediate family, no. Only my friends, and of course they are taking my side, so I came here for an impartial decision. Now no matter the judgement, I won't change my stance on the divorce, but I really need to know if I am in the wrong here. Let's see what impartial decisions there are. You don't get full custody just because your wife did something you didn't like. Yatta, ish. I'm all for the my body, my choice attitude, but she's putting her private life onto public domain, putting her family at risk. Uh, she's basically the a-hole for creating the account despite your argument and negative impact on your daughter. But your stance is also very, very drastic. Filing for divorce is one thing. Threatening to take her kids away is another. Probably an unpopular opinion, but yita, this kind of work is nothing to be ashamed of, and if she enjoys doing it, then let her do it. You are, of course, in the right to get a divorce if you can't deal with that. It's not for everyone. But you are the a-hole for threatening to take full custody of the kids. When she deserves to have time with her children, even if she made a career choice you don't agree with. Not the a-hole, you have every right to decide to divorce someone when they decide to become that kind of worker without your agreement. She's a grown woman, she can make her own goddamn choices. Of course, that doesn't mean she's free from dealing with the consequences. Hey look, it's only fair. If she's willing to sell what is normally an exclusive part of your relationship despite your disagreements, then hey mate, you should be free to do the same. You go right ahead and spend your time engaging with other women. Because let's be honest, that's basically what she's doing to you. But threatening to take the kids away, I mean, look, it seems like the kids don't want to be with her in the first place anyway. I can guarantee the son won't be the moment he finds out about all this, and honestly, he deserves to find out about this. But that said, if he does does be informed it should be in a completely unbiased manner. Your wife should not at all be ashamed for doing this kind of work. What she should be ashamed for is her lack of care and consideration for your family. Because really that is the issue here. Not about you being hurt, not about you being felt like you're cheated on, it's the fact that she is willing to break and destroy your family's dynamic 
purely for monetary gain. Now, we can argue that on her side of things, she's been completely brainwashed by her friend to believe that this is such a great idea and like, oh, if I can just prove it to my partner, he'll see how better this will be for us. Oh, he knows I love him. He knows that I'm only for him. I'm just doing this on the side to, you know, take advantage of those desperate lonely men out there. But even with that mindset, it, it doesn't forgive her. What do you think though? Is there any part of her that can be redeemable here? Is, is he jumping the gun a bit too much? For now, let's do the next story by Pearl Sparkle. Am I the a-hole for exposing my friend's activities to her parents? This happened a while ago. My friend, I'll call her A, and I were around 17 then. A's parents were really strict. Talking and interacting with boys are a big no. Also, they did not allow her to have social media. However, A did not believe in their values and used to live her life as she wanted, but used to hide it from her parents. Like, we were a group of five people, three girls and two boys, and whenever we used to hang out, she just told her parents that she was with the girls. To the incident, I was spending my day at A's home as we were studying together in her room. Her mom and her aunt suddenly asked us to leave the room because her aunt wanted to feed the baby and the house was full of visitors. So, I just took my books I needed and left my bag and phone in the room. After a while, A was called by her mom, and I just ignored it, but then they seemed to have a discussion after, which A told me she did not want to study anymore. I was a bit confused, but I just left without thinking much about it. Later that evening, A called me and told me that her mom went through my phone when we went out of the room. She was curious about my family, so she went through my gallery, I did not have a lock on my phone then, and saw all the photos of her with the boys. There was a major fight at her house, and her dad told her to not show her face to him again. She then accused me of leaving my phone unattended with no lock, when I knew her mum was Snoopy. I just felt really bad for her because she was downright sobbing. Two of my friends, the boys, seemed to think that I should have been more careful knowing how her parents are. I thought I was not the a-hole, but I was confused when they said so. So is she the a-hole for a Snoopy mama? Not the a-hole. Firstly, how were you supposed to know someone else's mum was going to search through your phone? Secondly, what gives her the right to search through your phone? And lastly, why are your friends ticked at you and not your friend's mum? Her parents need help. Yeah, another open and shut case. Couldn't agree more. It's one thing to be self-responsible with maybe a baby walking around the house and you leaving a fork on the floor right next to an electrical outlet. It's another when that baby is an adult woman who lacks any care for others' privacy. Like, I'm willing to turn a slight blind eye depending on the circumstances if you guys were maybe 12 years old. But 17? Yeah, nah. Like, I know that that's not exactly an adult, but you basically deserve the privacy of one. Absolutely be empathetic to your friend who's had to deal with these parents, but not at all should you feel guilty for what that mother did. Next story's a throwaway. Would I be the a-hole if I told my friend's girlfriend about his not-safe-for-work art Twitter? This is going to sound so fake, and I really wish it was. Uh, please note, we're all 22, 23 years old. First, I've been friends with this guy since 2014. I'll just call him Guy. We're incredibly close. Tell each other everything. Absolutely no secrets. We met online and have chatted nearly every day since. In 2017, he got a girlfriend. She and I chat here and there and we're definitely on good terms. Just never really got as close as I am with Guy. Still, we're decently good friends. I'm close enough to the girlfriend to know that she hates Furry Poon and hates Sonic the Hedgehog Poon especially. She thinks the animal thing is gross and is very upset with Sonic Poon because, well, as she put it, it would be like seeing Poon of Blue's Clues characters. It was just really meaningful to her as a kid, and yeah, it's pretty upsetting to think about. <laughs> I agree with her on these points. Anyway, me and Guy are in a call together the other day, just the two of us. Something about Sonic comes up. We make jokes about Rouge and the bat's boobs, etc. I figure he and I are just joking. He's never brought up Furry Poon or anything, but in our Discord server, the girlfriend and I have talked about how gross we think it is before, and thinking back, he was suspiciously quiet and all. Anyway, to make a long story short, he links me to his private, not-safe-for-work Twitter account. 
He's a digital artist, and the thing is full of furry and sonic poon that he himself has drawn, as well as tons of likes. He showed me this in the confidence that I was his best friend, and I wouldn't judge him for it, or tell anybody else. He wanted feedback on it because apparently nobody has ever seen his work before. This was, uh, shocking, to say the least. I told him the technicalities of the art were fine, but I had to go and hung up. I really don't want to be friends with this dude anymore. Like, I know in the grand scheme of things, it's not really harmful, but uh, I don't know. I think it's gross, and I think about Guy very differently than before. So I plan on just kind of ghosting him over time because I don't want to tell him it was because of the poon because well, that's an insanely weird conversation to have. And he showed me this out with confidence and I really do not want to hurt his feelings. I kind of want to tell the girlfriend about it though. She said stuff to me along the lines of, I don't care if you keep it in private. If you like it, there's something wrong with you and I don't want to associate with you. So obviously, if she ever finds out about this, she'll be devastated. And, and even more so if she knows I knew it but never told her. Like I said before, I am decently good friends with this chick and I feel like I'd be betraying her if I didn't tell her. Still, a guy told me not to share it with anyone, so I'd be betraying his trust and going back on my word when I agreed not to tell. Not that I care about him much anymore. So, would I be the a-hole if I told this girl her boyfriend is someone she considers to be a freak? People's thoughts. Everyone sucks here. You and girlfriend for being judgmental and stuck up over some stupid stuff like furry porn and dumb for keeping secrets when he knows probably will end his relationship. Y'all, we're the same age. You're embarrassing me. Grow the frick up. Yatta, it's none of your business, honestly. It sounds like you want to date this girl yourself and are looking for a way to break them up. Be a better friend. Yeah, I don't understand why you don't want to betray his girlfriend, but you have much less issues betraying someone you call your best friend. And who told you something in absolute confidence. Just gonna say, the only reason you feel like it'll be an insanely weird conversation to have with them as to why you don't want to be friends is because you know you are an a-hole to do it. Like, be honest with yourself, that's the only discomfort you have here. It's because you know you're being absolutely judgmental on this person. Don't get me wrong, I'm absolutely not into it either. I personally find it a bit weird and yucky in my own taste, but I also think the same towards people who like to eat booty. Unless you were trying to shove it in my face and, like, forcibly convert me towards it, I do not care what you are into. Uh, unless it's, like, little children, then I'm calling the police. But yeah, dude, you're the a-hole. Honestly, if this is how you treat friendships with people, you, you don't have friends. You don't treat them like friends. You just treat them as free samples of attention. Anyway, let's go on to the next story by Sad Scene. Am I the a-hole for making a bad joke about feeling a girl's breasts? I met a girl at a class we share once a week in the late afternoon or night, uh, we've been talking fairly well since. We're both awkward and anxious people, so she's usually been pretty understanding of things. We've shared lewd jokes with each other in the past, and she's expressed that she doesn't mind lewd jokes herself. Well, tonight we were walking to our cars, and I commented on how her low-cut shirt, saying that I had tried to avoid looking down that way, and that I was sorry if I made her uncomfortable or anything. She said that it was okay and that where she was from, people spoke what was on their minds, so she didn't really care too much. Well, when she said that, I figured I'd try to crack a lewd joke, and tried to joke about touching her chest with a nervous laugh at the end. Now, for clarification, I did not touch them, try to touch them, or make any physical move to touch them. If anything, I moved away from her when I said that. I'm not sure if it was my awkwardness, or if it was the fact that the joke was just bad, or if it was my nervous haha after I said it or something, but uh, she told me she had to go home, and since she lived a fair way away, and had a bit of a rough time before class, I didn't really pick up that my bad attempt at a joke didn't land. It wasn't until I got home and tried to talk to her that I realized she had blocked me and it was probably from the joke I made. Am I the a-hole? I already know I kind of made a mistake with the joke, but I didn't think she would be that uncomfortable from it given how she normally likes lewd jokes and how she told me she didn't really care and how understanding she usually is. Oh, you poor, silly, stupid fool. Okay, so by the way he's written this, I am going to offer some sympathy and not immediately smack down on him for being so disgusting. <laughs> that highlighted text alone shows 
acknowledge that you were somewhat aware of what you were saying was a bit risque. And word of advice from someone who has crossed the line a few times unintentionally myself, only dare cross the line as far as that person has crossed the line to you. For example, only smack your female friend's butt if she smacked your butt in the past too. Only joke about her body parts if she's joked about yours in the past too. It's like a social net of consent. It's also a safety net too, that if she ever does feel like you've crossed the line, you can at least apologize, but then also point out that you were just reciprocating the behavior you were receiving. The mistake you've made here is that you've assumed just because she said she doesn't mind lewd jokes that you can be making them so abruptly. And it really depends on how she said it when she said she doesn't mind lewd jokes or that she doesn't care when people speak their mind too much. Personally, that sounds like her just being reluctantly accepting of that behavior. Like a toddler who keeps picking their nose in front of you. Y you don't really like it or appreciate it, but you understand they're a toddler. That is just my thoughts on it, but let's see what the comments say. You're the a-hole. Uh, do you want a man joking with you about how tight your booty looks and how it's so comfortable looking? Uh, probably not, right? You were being a creep. Yeah, the problem with edgy humor is eventually you will cross someone's line. Also, for all you know, that joke may have triggered her somehow. Want to know what he said exactly? I can't remember the exact wording, but I know I think the joke was, they look comfortable and I wouldn't mind touching them. <laughs> with the touching part supposed to mean, like, sleeping on them. <gasps> Joke, dude, that's like a really creepy comment. And, and honestly, okay, if a girl's boobs are big enough that you would say something like you wouldn't mind sleeping on them or touching them, it wouldn't be surprising that she's dealt with those kind of comments a lot. But here's the other thing. I don't think it was right for her to block you. Like, good on you for going out of your way to find out if you did the wrong thing here. Most guys don't do that. They just think, oh, she's just not into me, so I'll just move on and keep trying the same tactic over and over again. But also, you weren't trying to flirt or make any dirty comments. You were more trying to make a joke. Again, you did it terribly. You absolutely sucked at it. But that was your intention. And I think that, yes, okay, she is valid to have felt uncomfortable. But unless you pull off a very intimidating persona when things don't go your way, I think it'll be very mature for both of you to give each other some space to talk about this kind of thing. And as you give her a platform for her voice to be heard about these things being so frustrating for her to deal with, you can equally be given a platform for how you are still learning how to socialize. You are an awkward person. You admit this. Look, I'm not trying to say that she has no right to block you out of her life. I just don't think this kind of behavior will ever fully go away until we encourage those who are dealing with it to stand up against it more. Obviously not in an aggressive way, but just in a way of saying, hey, no. Stop. But alas, these social situations aren't always the same. And everyone reacts and interacts very differently. Next story by Sikupoki. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help my best friend? Me, I'm a 13-year-old female, and my best friend, who's a 12-year-old male, go to the same dance school and have all the same classes. We each see each other every single day. My best friend is depressed because his family is broken up, and he doesn't like his mother, who is the parent he currently lives with, and he basically uses me as his therapist. Three weeks ago, he started telling me how upset he was that everyone was more talented than him and how badly he wants to demonetize. Don't hate me, hate YouTube. Hearing him say this worried me. So I tried comforting him by telling him the exact opposite of what he was saying. I wanted to help him, but he wouldn't take it. Every time I said something that was lifting him up, he'd immediately tell me about another one of his flaws. The conversation ended with me still saying positive things to him while he's being negative. A second conversation came up two weeks ago. He then went on to say how if he was there, he wouldn't have had anything to show because he says he's bad at everything, and then told me it must be nice to have something to show off. I tried to lift him up again, but he kept talking about his other imperfections. I got angry in the middle of the conversation and told him how it's emotionally draining for me when he's turning all of my positives into negatives and won't take time to listen to what I'm saying. This got him angry too, and the conversation ended there. The next day, he told me that afternoon he wanted to FaceTime, but I refused because I had to finish my schoolwork. That evening in class, he showed me a scar on his wrist and said, I got upset when you told me you wouldn't FaceTime, so I tried doing that to myself. Was that scar my fault? I didn't reply. Last week, he came to me another time, telling me how badly he wanted to demonetize. I was annoyed from the get-go and told him that I'm willing to listen to your problems, but I can't help you. Every time I offer you my help, you fire it back at me and turn it into something negative. He then told me he's sorry and said he'd stop annoying me. 
I figured this was an attempt to make me feel guilty. This made me even more angry, and I told him I didn't want an apology or something to guilt trip me. After that, he said he took it back, and the conversation ended there. I feel awful. Am I the a-hole? People's thoughts. You need to tell your parents right now. Your friend needs professional help that you can't give him. Please tell your parents. Yeah, Nata, letting a friend vent to you is one thing, but you are not obligated to be his therapist. You're a child, not a medical professional, and you're not emotionally prepared to talk someone down from being that state. Saying that he did that to himself because of you is downright manipulative. You should cut him out of your life and find friends that actually care about you. I'll give you some advice from someone who personally was your friend back in the day. Telling positive things to someone who was constantly focusing on the negative will not fix them. What their subconscious mind is thinking when you say those things is that they're a further idiot and so stupid that they can't comprehend and see what you're talking about. It's this other reality that they can't comprehend. What are you talking about? I'm actually good, but I'm not. Look at these other people. They're doing so much better than me. God, why can't I see this? Why can't I see what you're seeing? Oh, I'm so stupid and pathetic. The problem is they're likely focusing on your results and not their own progress. They don't see you practicing and learning. They see your results actually class. And so in their mind, you're just, you're just getting it easily. And of course, tackling a hobby or a skill with this mindset of already thinking you suck at it just makes it even harder psychologically to actually develop the skill. He's basically a perfectionist who does not feel perfect. Personal example, I play the saxophone. And I wish instead of my parents saying that, no, you are good at it. You just got to believe in yourself. That they instead said, okay, you think you're bad. Who are you comparing yourself to on this scale? Oh, this other person who's like five years older than you and practices like two hours a day? And how much have you been practicing? Oh, twice a week. Hmm, so let's focus less on your results and more on making your practice sessions more fun and enjoyable for you. Yada, yada, yada. Obviously, I wouldn't expect him to say it as harsh. But the fact remains that when someone is being really negative about themselves and the things they're doing, it's either because of this twisted uh, focus they have on everyone else's achievements rather than their own progress and, you know, just focusing on themselves. Or in another way, they feel like nothing's going right in their life and the only thing they feel is right is their mindset on things. And so in a way... They're trying to look for approval as to what they think about life and themselves. That can also be another factor into why he just isn't listening to what you're saying. So overall, I think we can all agree that what people have been saying in the comments is absolutely what you should be doing. People, you are not at all obliged to be anyone's therapist, no matter how close of a friendship you have. Your only obligation is to tell them to go to a therapist. Like, it's one thing to let your friend vent to you, but the moment you feel like they're giving you far too much info for you to give a genuine, constructive reply to, you have every right to step out. Seriously, we should be treating mental health like any physical injury. Fun fact, getting heartbroken and those kind of psychological pains actually does affect your brain in the same way as if you broke a leg. Your body, weirdly, needs to rest and heal. You can look this up, it's a strange phenomenon, I don't really have the links to it. But yeah, with that understanding in mind, if you don't have the confidence to fix someone's dislocated arm, don't be obliged to fix their mental health. And that's where we shall end things today. How'd you go? Did you have some fun today? You should like this video if you did. No hard feelings if you don't though, except for my hands gripping around your esophagus. Genuinely love you and thank you for watching today. I'm just a small channel, but you know, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, I shall be off. My name has been Jack. You have been a lovely person and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.